happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of How to Pass the Math FSA. We've got the fifth grade edition for you. Today we'll be working on this standard. It's maths.5.nf.1.1. NF means that we are working on fractions. Um, and this is lesson 11 today, which means that we will be adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers. So without further ado, let me teach ya. Before we begin, I just want to break down this little rhyme for you to help you. Um, because a lot of kids do not know when they need to have the denominators be the same and when they, it's okay for them to be different. So in today's lesson, our denominators need to be the same. Because when you add or subtract, denominators match. When you divide or multiply, breathe a little sigh of relief. So what does this mean? When you add or subtract fractions, your denominators must match. But when you're dividing or multiplying, you can breathe a little sigh because they don't need to match. You can just go straight across. Um, of course, you have a little bit more work to do when you're dividing, but we will get there in a later lesson down the road. So once again, when you add or subtract, denominators match when you divide or multiply breathe a little sigh got it good let's go to example one it says what is the value that means the amount of the expression so we need to solve this expression right here um, and what is an expression an expression does not have an equal sign that's the difference between an expression and an equation so here we go we are adding two fractions, actually two mixed numbers because we have a whole number and a fraction and a whole number and a fraction. So when they're mixed up like that with the whole numbers and the fractions, they are called mixed numbers. Um, and we're adding, so when we add or subtract, denominators match. Do they match right now? No way, we need to make them match. So here's what I do, okay? I'm gonna get my fractions going first. So I know that four and eight, a common denominator that they have would be eight and eight, okay? Did I do anything to get to this eight? No, so I'm gonna keep my three and three eighths, bring all that down. Now to get from four to eight, I had to multiply by two. When I multiply the denominator by two, I also need to multiply my numerator. So one times two, is two, so six and one fourth is equivalent or equal to six and two eighths. Kind of looks like 62 eighths, and that's not what I intended. That's a little bit better. Okay, so now I can just mult I can add across. So let me add my whole numbers first. Six plus three is nine holes. Six holes plus three holes is nine holes. And for our when we're adding, we just add across with the numerator. So two plus three would be five and our denominators stay the same, they have to match. So we would have nine and five eighths, nine and five eighths. So here I would write down nine, five eighths, but yours is a computerized test. So you would click nine and then you would make sure that you go over, you would click the fraction in the top, you would put five, and the bottom you would put eight and you would be finished. But there's also another answer that I think would be okay. And that would be if you convert it to a fraction greater than one, which would mean that you were doing eight times nine is 72, plus five is 70, ooh, blank and 77 eighths. That would be okay too. Get it, got it, good. Example two. It says, use the numbers to the left to complete the missing value in the equation. All right, so this would be a graphic response item display. This is where you would drag a number and you would put it into the box. But first we need to solve it out. So I have 6 twelfths minus 1, I don't know, equals 1 fourth. Okay, so this is a very typical FSA type of problem. I've seen a lot where they're missing numbers and you have to be able to plug it in. So um, 
Do, 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 do. So first we need to make sure we are subtracting here, which means that my denominators must match. When you add or subtract, denominators match. So right now, these two denominators do not match. I'm gonna make sure that they do. And I know that four times three is 12, so that would give me a matching denominator. So I'm gonna bring all this down. I don't know what that is still. And this would be 12. Now, to get from four to 12, I said that I multiplied by three. What I do on the bottom, I also have to do in the numerator on the top. One times three is three. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take this guy away for a second and plug in something that would be equal to it using my denominator of 12, okay? So 6 twelfths minus what equals 3 twelfths? Well, 6 twelfths minus 3 equals 3. 6 minus 3 is 3 and my denominators just go across. So this, these two need to have, this is my equivalent fraction, I'm sorry. This is my equivalent fraction for what is up here. So 3 twelfths, if I were to divide by 3 and divide by 3, I would get 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so 12 fourths. That would go here, 4 goes in. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. First of all, we are subtracting, and when you add or subtract, your denominators must match, but right now they don't, so I need to rewrite them. Minus one, okay. So eight and four, what is a common denominator? I know that four times two would give me eight. That would be matching denominators, so eight and eight. Now all my denominators match. Didn't change anything here, and four, times 2 was 8. So 3 times 2 is 6. All right. Now, I can't, when you subtract, I want you guys to slow down. When you subtract, I want you to get in the habit of subtracting the fractions first. Kind of similar to how when you're subtracting like this, you would subtract the ones first. You subtract your smaller um, place. Well, our fractions are our, small, are our smaller pieces, so we want to do those first, okay? So, 5 eighths minus 6 eighths. You can't do that. You can't take away because 6 eighths is greater than 5 eighths. So you need to regroup, and I'm going to grab a different color marker. Get my black. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to take away one of the holes and I'm going to break it up into a fraction. Now when I took away a whole, that means now I have eight equal parts that I'm breaking it up into. So I'm going to add eight to my numerator. So now let me rewrite my fraction. That would be two, five plus three is thirteen eighths, two and thirteen eighths minus one and six eighths. Now I can subtract my fractions. So 13 eighths minus 6 eighths would be 7 eighths. And 2 minus 1 whole is 1 and 7 eighths, which would be B. But it also says to select all the values that are equivalent to this. So the other one would be, if I converted this to an improper fraction or a fraction greater than 1, 8 times 1 is 8 plus 7 is 15, so 15 8 would be my other answer. All right, so we're on our last one. It's example four, and we have another missing number problem. It says, what's the missing number in the following equation? So I've written the equation down here. Um, it's an equation because it has an equal sign. And I am adding fractions that do not have the same denominator, but my denominators must match, okay? so. What I need to do is rewrite this with all my denominators matching. Okay. Now I notice that over here, my sum has the denominator of 35. And I know that seven times five is 35, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make my denominator 35 for all of them. Okay, so 
5 times 7 equals 35, so same thing in the numerator, 1 times 7 is 7, and 7 times 5 equals 35, so I need to figure out what this is, okay, oops, this can just come down because it was already 35. All right, so now, here is what I'm going to do. 4 plus 2 holes equals 6, and notice this time I started with the whole numbers, um, that's because I'm adding and it's okay. Okay, equals 6. What numerator plus 7 equals 17? Well, 10 plus 7 equals 17, and my denominators just go all the way across. So what belongs in here? It's 10, but that's not an answer choice, and that's because the original thing was over, with a denominator of 7. So if I multiply 7 times 5 to get 35, what would I multiply by 5 to get 10? And that would be 2. So 2 should have gone in the box. Another way to do that would have been to take this and to divide by 5 and divide by 5 to get 2 and 2 sevenths. All right, before we close up this episode, I have some motivational words for you, actually a challenge for you today, okay? Your life will start to change for the better when you stop whining about stuff and start working. Stop complaining that stuff is hard and start working at it. Start putting forth effort into it. That goes for everybody, students, teachers, parents, whoever is watching this. You will start to become more successful and your life will start to be more fulfilling you stop whining about stuff and start doing something about it okay all right so I challenge you to do that how about one week for one week don't whine don't complain and I bet awesome things will come your way